My name is Sam Vaknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. A few days ago I posted a video of this channel um, delineating 10 reasons why I think Hamas has won this war against Israel decisively. Today I would like to elaborate a bit on the aftermath of this conflict, an aftermath which is not beneficial to Israel. The southern and northern parts of Israel have been rendered as uninhabitable as Chernobyl. The Jewish state has been reduced to a ghetto on the Mediterranean coast and in and around West Jerusalem. Both Hezbollah and Hamas are largely intact, though bruised. There is no need for a repeat of October 7th. A few cross-border raids or rockets would do the trick and maintain the Israeli borderlands Jordanheim. Israel has always been an impossible proposition, an island of non-indigenous Jews, some say settler colonialists, in a sea of angry and resentful, largely native Arabs. The only thing that stood between the Zionist enterprise and extinction was deterrence. On October 7th, and even more so with Iran's brazen attack, Israel lost its mythical aura. The war in Gaza exposed Israel and its military as the paper tigers that they are. Moreover, Israel is now as much of a pariah state as North Korea. No Arab, or any other for that matter, country will normalize relations with a, a country labeled genocidal and whose leaders face prosecution in the ICC. Everyone knows that the two-state solution is an interim step towards a one-state solution with a Palestinian majority. Western and international leaders advocate the two-state solution because, rightly or wrongly, they have come to regard Israel as an illegitimate usurper of Arab lands and an egregious, repeat aggressor. Israel is no longer just a guilt-tripping, victimhood-based nuisance, but a global threat. There are simply too many Arabs and Muslims, and too few Jews, to justify recurrent massive disruptions to global trade and world order. And so Israel's days are numbered. Educated, skilled Israelis have been voting with their feet in the mother of all brain drains. The population of the Jewish state is now comprised, with few notable exceptions, of low-quality leftovers, the remainders of the erstwhile thriving experiment in statehood. The country's institutions, from its government to its judiciary to its militia-like military, reflect this inexorable decline in social and human capital. Worse yet, looming domestic and international crises are likely to consume the resources and attention of a depleted West. In an act of mind-boggling brinkmanship, Ukraine has just been granted permission by the United Kingdom, Germany and the United States to use their weapons on targets inside Russian territory. This is one step removed from a declaration of war. Russia and its allies, including China, will not let this precedent stand. They will not take it lying down. A global conflagration is just a matter of time. Closer to home, the United States is on a path to its second civil war, as I've been warning for almost two decades. If Trump were to win the elections, he will establish a dynastic dictatorship and face fierce armed resistance. If he were to lose at the ballot box, he will re-embark on a steal-the-vote campaign, and this time replete with overt violence and a countrywide insurrection. Against this background of anarchic tumult and self-preoccupation with existential threats, Israel's predicament is likely to be treated as mere background noise, most easily resolved by dismantling the Jewish failed attempt at self-determination. The seventh one 
in the history of the Jewish people.